So you want to be a balloon twister? Well, in this video, whether you're a beginner or a hobbyist or never even touched a balloon, this is the video for you. So I'm going to teach you step by step, start from the bottom and push you all the way up to whether you want to be a hobbyist or you want to be a pro. So think of it as balloon 101. Let's hit the intro. Wait, what? There's no intro? I gotta do the intro? Okay, there's no intro. Hit it. All right, since there's no intro, let's just start with the thing. The first thing we're gonna talk about is types of balloons. Since I live in the US, in the States, there's two brands that I recommend. First one, Qualitex, these guys right here. And these were the first ones I started off with from day one. And there's many reasons why. Number one, I lived in Hawaii. Hawaii was very limited at the time, so Qualitex was the only brand that I knew of. When I moved to the States, the mainland, um, I met a bunch of other balloon artists and they introduced me to what's called Batalitex. And also the distributor down here had Batalitex as well. And they're just as good as well. They're both, they're both really good, very durable, and I recommend either one of the two. The only difference is that Qualitex are easy, accessible to get, versus Batalitex. So I'll leave the descriptions down below where to get them in your nearby area. But if you're a beginner, beginner, never touched a balloon and everything and need to get balloons, you could email me, but I'll also put links down below, options to choose from. But if you really wanna go more deep and dive into it, send me an email. So now that, now that you know the types of balloons, the size of balloons. So there's two types of balloons that most twisters use when they first start off with. It's what we call 260 balloons. 260Q, 260B. 260Q is 260 Qualitex balloons. 260B, 260 Batalitex balloons. So the 260 means the size of the balloons. So the first number is the width, the diameter width. So two means two inch diameter. And then the 60 is the length. So the 260 looks like this. And this is a standard balloon you most likely see all the time and we recommend. I'm gonna mouth inflate this one, but I'm not gonna give this one away. It's 2020, I'm sorry. So two inches in width, 60 inch in length. Well, I didn't fully inflate it. I actually did what's called a tail. Okay. And then the other balloon, let me get rid of this one, hold on is what we call a 160. So it's a lot thinner. And the reason why 160s are good, it's good for the kids ages five and above. You can let the kids use a 260, but I noticed that kids at age five to seven, their hands are smaller. So the 160 is a lot easier and durable for them to learn muscle memory while they're twisting and learning it. And then you move them over to 260, it gets a lot easier. So that's a quick tip that I've seen kids or when I taught kids, I gave them the 160 bag of balloons and they were learning through that process. These guys are five times harder to blow. <laughs> so, so yeah, <laughs> so you could see the difference from 160 to 260. Actually, I got the 260 right here. So here's the difference between the 260 and the 160, the size. So the 260 is a little bit more wider. 260, 160. Well, the length is not 60, which is five feet across because I didn't fully mouth inflate it. So just to give you an idea. So those are the size of balloons. So like I said, you don't have to buy the 160, but if you have kids, you're doing it as a family thing. And the kids will, if they get frustrated, you know, you have that kid that, you know, wants to learn it so quickly and anxious and everything and gets frustrated on it. The 160 is, is easier for them. That's what I learned and known. But they could still do it in 260. I've seen kids even ages three doing it in 260. They just fight with it and wrestle with it. Your choice, but I recommend 260 initially because that's the standard that I learned. But I was 18 when I first learned, 18 or 20 when I first learned. So it's easier at that time. <laughs> I wasn't five years old. So those are the balloons to learn. And so the types of balloon pumps you're gonna need are the ones that are handheld. Those are the best ones, especially when you're beginning, those are the best ones to start off with and use. Even some of the pros still use balloon pumps to this day. So here's one of them. This is a single action. 
most of us don't use this one to be honest but as a beginner it's okay to use because this one is called a single action pump and the reason why it's a single action is because when you pull it it won't inflate the balloon yet until you push it up and that's one action so you would have to do two actions to do to make it blow once and as for the other pump it is a dual action same thing by Qualitex as well this is a dual action because it actually pumps while you push out and push in so it does for one stroke it does two pumps so that's why we use this for speed so this is a good one to use over this one and there's other brand i mean Qualitex had other ones before but they have been discontinued like this one this purple one so if you could find this one online or somewhere or someone's selling it by all means use this one because i still like this one a lot i still have like four or five left because I like this one, but I do this one. I got used to. Too. I mean, there's benefits on this one a lot. The reason why they updated it, I think there's mainly three reasons that I can think off the top of my hand. Number one, the handle is a whole lot better. While this one is a little bit more rounded, so it feels more easier to grip. Number two, it doesn't roll off the table as much because they have these ridges right here. While before it used to just be fully rounded, this one has more ridges, so it actually stops itself from rolling, preventing it from breaking because it goes through a lot of wear and tear and the third thing is the color which is easier to find especially when you're in a party at an event so you don't forget that right before you leave at an event or a party the 160 pumps they do have those as well this is optional this is a 160 pump this is a dual action 160 as well by Qualitex and it's easier to put the 160 balloon here and pump but you're gonna be pumping a lot but 160, because it's so small, you're not going to be pumping as much. But when you put in a 260 balloon, because you could actually put a, fit a 260 as well too. So it's easy to pump this. The dual action pump for here, you can put a 160, but you have to stretch the nozzle here. So you're going to be fighting a little bit. But when you pump it, it pumps really quick. And also they have another reasonable one. I've seen this online and someone gave me this and I use it and I actually like this one so this one's actually a good one too I don't know where it's from but if I find a link for it I'll put the links in the description so FYI the single action pump this one is more reasonable than this one too so just FYI but like I said when you do it as a hobby or you go out and perform this one works a lot easier you'll, you'll see why because you have to do so many in a short amount of time this one you have to do twice as much time and it slows you down so but it's good for practice not a problem so all right so now you know the types of balloons and the types of pumps we're going to use now we're going to actually use them in action so i'm gonna step back and you get to see that all right cool so i'm gonna use i also have this bad boy so it's actually a stand -up, stand up one and it does one stroke of a balloon you're gonna see this one too this is the one i use at events I also use an electric one, but this one I use most of the time because it actually just pumps one, one stroke and it's perfect for speed. Um, but we're going to use the pumps first, no, the 160s and this. So you get, get an idea of how they work. So with the single action, we're going to start off with this guy. Like I said, this is a single action one. So first thing I'm going to do is grab the nozzle of the balloon. I'm gonna feed it right in between where the, the hole is and then just roll it through so it's locked in. And before I pump it, I gotta hold the nozzle, not over here on top, hold the nozzle because you need the air to push off. So when I pull it, nothing, no air came off. But when I push it, you can actually see it pushing itself already, pushing itself. So yeah, so watch when I push it, pull back. So it's a single action. So it's doing that. Pushing now, I'm pulling back. Pushing now, go back, pushing now. So that's a single action for it. And so that's how to blow it up. To tie it, and when you use a pump, the problem with the pump is that you have this small little slack to tie and you have a hard time tying it. So my advice to you is this. You grab, use your left hand, the opposite hand, hold it, let go, and use the hand that you're gonna twist. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna twist a bubble like that and then I'm going to use this hand to hold that bubble where I made the bubble and let go now I have all this slack now it's so easy to tie it so all you do is wrap it around and 
just feed it through. So when you wrap it around, use two fingers to wrap around the two fingers. Well, let me go close. Wrap it around two fingers, and then I just go in between, lock it in, and it's right there. It's locked in. And all you just pull it right out. And because I did that slack, gave that slack, it was so easy to tie so you don't injure your fingers, especially when you do hundreds of these, you're gonna feel it over time through that process. So that's how to tie the first balloon. That's one. Okay. But that's with the single action. The dual action, let's use a different color. I'm gonna do the same thing. Grab the nozzle, feed it in between. So I roll it through. I'm gonna hold this. So when I pull it, it's already gonna start. You see that? And then now I gotta push it back in. And then I can pull it a lot quicker. But you have to be going through a constant motion because when you stop, it actually slowly starts to deflate while the single action, it actually stays in place, which I didn't know about that. So when you first start, use a single action one. So like I said, when you have a pump, you have less slack and a lot of beginners don't know that. So they're fighting and tying and fussing with that. And like I said, all you gotta do is hold it on one end, twist it. So I'm gonna teach you how to twist already right off the bat. So I twist and then I hold that area where I twisted it, let go and then I tie it because I have all this slack now. Before we only had this much slack, but because I have now this much slack, I have this much to do. So it's just an easy tie. So I just wrap it around and then I go around it and under it and just lock it in. And there's number two. Yeah, save it. So those are the two pumps to use. As for this bad boy, this is a single action, like one, there's one stroke. So I would lift this up and push it down and I'm done, boom. And I would do the, what I just did. I release a slack initial thing. So I do that, lock it, wrap it, tie it, okay? There we go. So that's how to tie a balloon and what not for a 260 pump. So like I said, I recommend these, especially when you first start, because you're just popping it and popping it. But when you're a pro and you have to do hundreds and hundreds of them at events, I'd recommend using one of those bad boys. So I'm gonna use only these these pumps for the beginner formats. But when I start teaching you tutorials and whatnot, I'll be using the bigger pump because it's just faster, easier, and quicker. Okay, so. Now we're gonna use the single pump, the 160. So using a 160 balloon, I'm gonna show you the 160. Actually, when you put the 160 in with the 260, it's a lot harder. So you're gonna have to fight with it. You're gonna have to wrestle with it until you get it in. And you have to make sure it's locked in. And then once you lock it in, then you gotta pump it. But it pumps really fast. See, so watch. That was one stroke, one full stroke, and you got half of it done. So that works. But as for a 160, that's why they have this one, a real small one. It's just easy to fight right through. It's like putting the 260 in like butter. Yeah. So then you just pump it like normal. And the kids will do this and they're okay with this. Actually, this one's a broken one. I think the kids broke this one. <laughs> I mean, it feels like it's broken. So there it works. And then tie it up. Like I told you, I tie it off and that should be good. I'm blowing up with my coral balloons, the ones I hardly use, so don't mind the other one. And of course, the. So let's see how this one. So you just pump. Same thing. Simple. It works. And to tie again, remember, I don't have that much slack. So I would make a bubble, release. And because I held that in, that's why I released it. Now I have all this slack to tie. It's so easy to tie. Oh, softening a balloon. That's another thing to prevent from popping the balloon. You also want to burp the balloon or we call softening the balloon. So I'm going to use the pump. Blow it up. Okay. And I, so I'm going to make the bubble, release that, but all this is really tight, real tension tight. 
So what we do is soften the balloon is we what we call burpus. So we just leave it. We can lift our leg too while we're doing that, but it softens the balloon a lot. So it makes a difference, especially in um, high temperatures, because in high temperatures, balloons do expand. So when you're doing balloons outdoors, you want to burp this balloon because it does expand. And when you're twisting too, the times with the heat, it actually, you may put friction. So when you're twisting, you know, when you're twisting a dog, you're still resisting friction. So it may have a higher risk of popping, especially if it's very tough. So you want to soften the balloon. Another way to soften the balloon is squeezing it and it softens the balloon as well. So it's just that simple. And this is what you're going to be learning in the next video. No, why are we on there? Well, not this part. That part's there. <laughs> but you'll learn that in that next video. One more thing for pumping a 260 is you, whenever you blow up the balloon, you want to have what we call is a tail. So if you notice, most of my balloons that I, twi I pumped up, I saved up some slack. I didn't fully inflate it. And the reason why is because we want to reserve some tail for the balloon because every time you twist the balloon, the balloon still needs to push the air somewhere. And if it doesn't, that area is going to expand and it's going to pop. And if you notice us as twisters, we only twist one side. If you start knowing that might shatter glasses and everything because we twist from one way and we keep on twisting till we have no slack, no tail. And if you notice how much tail I have, I'm going to show you right now. It's about a good three and a half. So you can see it's about a, almost a thumb width length. So it's about, okay, let's go right there. About that much. Okay. I'm going to start twisting the balloon. You're going to see it pushing the air out because of the amount of my thumb is going to get, it's going to go even smaller. It's going to go up to here. Eventually watch. I'm going to just twist. I'm going to make the head of a dog. Okay. And just the head of a dog, if you look at the balloon now, the tail, it's this small now. You remember it was right here? So it pushed itself that far. I'm going to make a neck and two legs real quick. Okay. And look how much I have now. I can't even close the balloon now. Because like I said, when I'm twisting the balloon on this side, the balloon, the air of the balloon is pushing to find space and when it doesn't have space it's going to eventually pop because it has no area no way of pushing the air somewhere else so that's a key tip on knowing that when you twist you got to have what we call a tail it's a dog it needs a tail let's be real but all your other balloons will need a tail as well so now i'm going to do a body do a back leg and if you notice he has a long tail but look how much tail is left and then I just make a bubble and I'm going to kill the rest. Um, when you kill the balloon, most balloon twisters after a while, when they figure out the skill, they'll pop the balloon by tearing up the balloon. But if you don't know how to do it, you want to cut it. But cutting it at the tail is another key tip because when you cut it at the tail, the air is going to push up and it's going to air out that way and have enough time so it prevents it from popping. But if you cut right here, it's going to immediately pop because the air is going to expand and it's going to escape. But when you pop it here, it's going to push over here and release out. So when I grab the scissors and I pop right here, see it's deflating right now as we speak. And it won't pop the balloon. So yeah, so you would use the tail to cut the balloon. And then you have this big long tail, you use the scissors, cut it, dump it. And you have your dog. So that's a tip. So this will be the one last tip, but this tip will actually help you for the next video where we're going to teach you the techniques of twisting, where we're going to teach you what's called the loop twist, the bubbles, the bubble twist, just the basic bubble twist, um, three prong, ear twist, and apple twists. Those are the main twists you need to learn to pretty much do 80, 90% of balloon twisting. You could be a professional hobby with those four types of twists alone. So that being said, this is the last tip. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blow up this balloon real quick. Make a bubble, loosen it, tie it, all right? 
I'm gonna squeeze it off, soften the balloon. Because you can squeeze it to soften it instead of burping it. It's your choice. But you just want to always have a tail. So the last tip, you're gonna have two, you have two hands. One hand is gonna be your holder hand. It'll hold the balloon most of the time. The other hand is gonna be your twisting hand. I'm a left-handed, but I twist right-handed. So I learned from friends, and when I learned from friends, they were all right-handed, so I guided myself to learn right-hand, so I can do right-hand. I can really do left-hand too, but I'm very I'm not as fast as my right-hand. If you're a right-hander, you twist with your right hand, you hold the balloon with your left hand. So your left hand's gonna hold the balloon most of the, well, it's gonna hold the balloon. The right-hander is gonna be the twisting hand. I recommend twisting inward when you twist, not outward, but I've seen pros twist outward, but I feel comfortable twisting inward. It just feels more comfortable, it feels a better flow, and I use my body sometimes to cheat, so. But you can twist outward this way too, but it's, I think it has more, feels like more resistance, so that's why I feel like inward's better. But like I said, it's apples and oranges. So I'm gonna show you how I, I'm gonna twist a dog, and you're gonna see me twisting inward while holding the balloon as well, so. I hold the balloon, I'm gonna make a bubble, and but before I make the second bubble, I have to hold this balloon because if I let go, it will come off. So I'm gonna twist the balloon, hold it. It doesn't matter how you hold it, as long as you wanna, you have to hold that end. It doesn't matter how you hold it, you just wanna hold that end. So that being said. And also another tip, when you first start, you wanna twist the balloon three to four times. You don't wanna twist it a little bit because it can unravel very easily. You wanna twist it one, two, three, or four. Over twisting it will actually weaken that area so it'll actually unravel when you lock it in. So that's another thing. So three to four is a good golden rule to twist. So under twisting and over twisting is not a good thing but over twisting is better than under twisting. I twist three times. I'm gonna make while I'm holding this I'm twisting another one but I still gotta hold it so I'm using my left hand to hold it but I do what's I use my pointer and finger to hold that so I have more slack to grab it. And then I guide my hand. So my left hand will be a guider, but my right hand is only doing the twisting. So I'll twist the right hand. So it's holding it. My pinky is holding the bottom one. The thumb and ring is holding the third one. My first two fingers are holding the first and second one. And then I'm going to lock them in. So I'm using my twisting hand and just locking the two and three in and that's how I lock it in. Once I lock it in, I can let go and that's fine. So you can do whatever you want. You can talk to it. You can give it food, give it food, munchy, 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 you know, play with it. You know, you can do whatever you want as an artist. So the next thing is I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna make a bubble, make a leg, make another leg, and then I'm gonna hold it I'm holding it with my left hand, holding it, and then I'm going to twist it, lock in place. Oh, let me fix that. And you can still do intermission, feed it, munch, 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 munch. You can do sit, sit, stay, up, you know, stuff like that. And then the next one, same thing. Make a bubble, make another bubble, but because I can hold it, you have control over it. So that's the left hand's always holding it. My right hand's the one twisting it. So, oh, see it came off. Three times. Three times. Three times. And then you twist it in. And there you go. But I usually just kill that. Looks more pretty. But like I said, in this the next video, we're gonna teach you how to make this dog. And like I said, but those were the tips. I'm going to reiterate the tips again in the next video, but just to prepare you for it so that once you feel confident and ready to twist, go to the next video. So that's that.